All right, guys, we'll give you a little walk around of the bike. It's it's a neat looking bike. It It's shaped sort of like a mountain bike. It has sort of that feel. We want to take a look real quick here at this light. It does come with this nice LED light with a reflector underneath it. And this is adjustable for your taste. There's a, a screw here. When you're putting this thing together, you're going to need a four millimeter, five millimeter hex head. And I think there's one spot you might need a three millimeter. So it's mostly hex heads that we put the bike together, except for tightening the um, pedals on that required pair of pliers or a crescent wrench or something like that. So don't need a whole lot of tools. All your cabling and everything is here in the front and it's, it's wrapped up really nicely. Gives you a good range of motion. As you can see, you don't have to worry about tangles or stretch cords or anything. Tire. You do have shocks, front shocks. I'll show you this action on the front shocks. So when you go over little bumps, you get some, some shock action. Now it is a hard tail, meaning there's no shocks on the back. We're gonna go right here to the display. I wanna show you this. This is a nice little display. It's uh, in, in white and blue. Here's your power, your battery level. This is your speed in miles an hour. It does have a trip odometer right here. And you can see it has an odometer. And I, we've put four miles on the bike so far. So this is accessed by just hitting information and it'll default back to your miles per hour when you get, get going. Um, and right here you have your pedal assist. Now what is pedal assist? If you don't know much about e-bikes, the whole point of an e-bike is to assist you in pedaling, especially when you're going up hills. Um, you have, this bike has five pedal assist levels. And the higher the number, the more power you're going to get out of the bike, out of the battery. And of course, the more you're going to deplete the battery as well. We typically ride our e-bikes around pedal assist one, two, and occasionally three. But if we're in heavy traffic and trying to not get run over, we'll go all the way up to five. But for this particular bike, I've been cruising around around one or two around the neighborhood and trails and things. Um, but let me show you how this works. I'm going to put it on pedal assist two. And I'm going to rotate the bike like this. Got a heavy duty kickstand down here. Now this bike has throttle right here on just below the control. There's a throttle button. You see that button right there? That is how you can operate this on throttle only. But let me show you how this works. I'm gonna lean this over on this heavy duty kickstand and I'm just gonna hit the throttle. You see that's pedal assist too. And it says it's going, if I was riding, that would be 11 miles an hour. Now I'm gonna go up to pedal assist three. That shows me 14 miles an hour. I'm going to go up pedal assist 4. And I'm up to 17 miles an hour. And then when I get to pedal assist 5, that's going to get me up right at 20. Well, actually it says 28. That's crazy. I cannot get it to do 28 by itself. It just doesn't happen. But there's a big difference between pedal assist 4 maxing out at about 17 or 18 and then click at the pedal assist 5 now this is with no resistance no weight no nothing showing 28 i personally don't think it's going to be 28 on the road i haven't had it had it haven't had it get there yet now, just, just stop that one other thing on the control i want to show you is you do have a little button right here for your to turn your headlight on and off you want to see the headlight on tammy there's the headlight. Cute little headlight. We tested it against our headlight, and it actually is a pretty good, pretty good headlight, believe it or not. It gives you enough range to ride around in the dark. Now, you really don't want to ride these bikes in the rain or in the dark. Your hub motor is right here. And once you've been riding 10, 15, 20 miles, you don't want to touch that hub motor. It does get pretty warm. Rear hub motor. You've got dual disc brakes, and these brakes are beefy enough to uh, stop an electric bike at 28, 30 miles an hour. I think I did want to show you that right here, 
you have a key. So you can lock your bike out or, well, this is actually not a key. This is a key slot, but I left the keys at home. You put the key in, you can twist it, pull this lever, and the battery drops out. So if you're worried about somebody stealing your bike, you can either do what we do, cable them up when you stop somewhere, or just take the battery out. Nobody's gonna be wanting to pedal a 60 pound bike with no electronics. So if you take that battery, turn the key, pop this, battery slides out, pops out. You take the battery into the restaurant with you, nobody's gonna steal your bike. Just, they're just not. They might try and then they'll be like, uh, they'll you know, just drop it on the side of the road. But, um, that's a good overview of the bike. Um, we'll come back after we do some riding and we'll talk about some of the good, good points, bad points, okay points, and then we'll give you a final rating. Got anything else? You, did I miss anything, Tammy, that we need to talk about? Oh, the handle grips. I do like these handle grips. They are very, very comfortable. I don't know what brand they are or anything like that, but they are very comfortable hand, hand grips. And I don't know the, the brand on the brakes. Um, I do have a couple little thoughts about that, but we will we will talk about that when we get to the end. So for that, let's get to riding. It's hot. I need some air. guys you've seen us riding you've seen us flying up and down the road you've seen us pedaling you've seen us throttle only you've seen us with our goofy goober helmets as tammy calls them yeah um final thoughts on this are coming up but you want to know price and is it worth it okay first of all if you want to buy this tst e-bike we're going to put a link down in the description of this video and we may even put it right along here on the bottom or up here on the top or somewhere so you can click and, and purchase this TST e-bike. These right now currently, and this is July 5th, 2024, they are $399. Now the Does that price, include shipping or not? Or no, no, I'm sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure. That, well, it, that depends on your, you know, Amazon Prime, all this stuff. Uh, this is a bike that is a product of China, which doesn't always mean it's good, bad, or ugly. It just means you are getting a Chinese-made e-bike. Was it packaged well? Oh yeah, it was. Too well. Yeah, and I had no problem with the way it was packaged other than it was packaged so well I popped a tire. Should have used scissors instead of a razor knife. Positive notes on this, I kind of like the seat. I know Tammy says it's not broad enough for a, a lady. Um, it's pretty decent though. It's not the worst seat I've ever sat on. No, it's a nice cushy mm -hmm. gel seat. Um, I like the way it sits. I like that mountain bike kind of feel where I'm kind of over the handlebars. Our, our other e-bikes are more kind of cruiser, hybrid mountain bike type things. And you kind of sit more upright. I kind of like over the handlebars. Uh, the bike does not come with a rear view mirror, which most don't. Our more expensive ones didn't even come with a rear view mirror. Doesn't come with a place for a cup holder, which is fine. You can, you can get mounts for that and different things. Headlight is pretty good. I would recommend changing the tires. These are nylon that comes with it. I went for a more rubber tire for the front. Um, I would recommend changing those. Uh, the motor seems powerful enough. It's a, it's a good, powerful motor. I like this. This is your crank. The crank length is what hangs up a lot of people mm -hmm. on, on bikes because if you 
have ridden the bike a lot and it has a long clank crank and you cut a curve kind of sharp and deep, right. you'll get what's known as a pedal strike if you're not careful. And that means you'll be coming around and your bottom pedal will hit the pavement. And usually that's a pretty big inconvenience, but a lot of times it's extremely dangerous. You and we get that right there all the time with our current e-bikes Yeah, the, the before crankle. this one. Yeah, the crank length on our other e-bikes is a little bit longer than it really should be. And we do get a lot of pedal strikes. Um, and we definitely need to mention these fenders again. Yeah, these I, plastic fenders. I don't we know. Don't like I honestly don't know if those are plastic or such thin metal, but this back one is definitely plastic. I was messing around with the front fender. I think it may be more of a really light aluminum. It doesn't feel as plastic as this. I, just me, for aesthetics, I would remove both fenders. I haven't done the rear fender, as I mentioned. And, and it you, almost feels like it's being um, held on by coat hangers. I mean, yeah, these are these are kind of light. Um, yes. But I mean, I understand the fact that they're plastic because if you bounce a little bit or something, you don't want metal rubbing up against your tire, cutting into your tire, uh -huh. anything like that. That's true. Uh, the shifting again came out of the box nice. The shifting. Um, and while we're here talking about the rear end of the bike, the hub motor rear hub motor is super quiet it is compared to i mean anybody knows anything about e-bikes our other e-bikes have 700 i think it's a 750 watt buffang motor mm -hmm. and man that thing you it's it's loud it is loud it's whine it whines as you as you kick it in wah, 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 wah. this one you heard it and it doesn't even have a brand name on it, so yes. I don't know what the brand name is. Yeah, I don't know the brand name of the motor. I looked in the literature and didn't see, but you can see how quiet it is. You can barely hear it when you're riding down the road. All you're really hearing there is the derailleur. Um, this does come with the derailleur guard for those of you that are scared of knocking your bike over and messing up your shifter. Uh, they do recommend going to your LBS or your local bike shop, as we call it, LBS, and getting a derailleur guard put on. I didn't put it on because we're just out here on the pavement. But to conclude the video, I, I, did I give it a full 100% thumbs up? Not exactly. I mean, for the price point, I'm going to give this bike on a scale of 0 to 100 big scale. Well, you want to go zero to, zero to ten? Okay. Can and I do ten halves? being the best. Ten being the best? Can I do half? Sure. Like you can do yours and I do mine. Um, on a zero to ten. On a zero to ten for the price point. Now for the fun I've had on it. And taking into account the chintzy little things we talked about. I'm going to rate this thing about an eight and three quarters. That's what I'll rate. Really? Really? Yes. So it gets, I was thinking of eight. It, it, gets kind of a, it gets kind of a thumbs up like this. Yeah. Um, a few little irritating things. But bear in mind, that rating is based on us coming off a $2,500 bike. Yeah. And going to a, three, a $400 bike. Right. If this had been our very first e-bike, I'd say we probably rated a little, probably a little higher. Right. Like I said. So anyway, that's the bike. We hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you liked the scenery. Like. Yeah, don't forget to like, share, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on the notification bell so anything we post will come up in your feed. <laughs> Goodbye. Y'all have a good one. We'll talk to you next Take time. Take care. Thanks.